Welcome back to Bob's Magic Emporium. Time for the next all new trick questions, a show where we talk about your favorite magic tricks, taking a look at today, the multiplying potato chips. So let's jump right into the questions. Caleb Casper says, how easy is the trick and is it worth the money? And how does most of your audiences like it? Also, can I get a shout out? Please and thank you. Big smiley face, regular smiley face, question mark inside of a box, question mark inside of a box, big smiley face, regular smiley face. All right. So the uh, first of all, go check out Caleb Casper's channel for some really awesome magic videos and he wants to know how easy the trick is. The DVD comes with two handlings, well actually it comes with three handlings. It comes with uh, the uh, flash version of the trick which is like an easy quick version. There's the more long drawn out version which requires a little bit more in the way of not really sleight of hand. It requires more remembering the sequence of how everything is supposed to go. And then there's a passe passe bottle kind of routine but it's passe passe Pringles can. Uh, and you need the passe passe can to actually do that. Uh, there is an, an, there's an each routine comes with an eight and a 12 bottle uh, set. So it tells you how to do it with your eight bottle or your 12 can set. Um, but this is just like the multiplying bottles in which you can come up with your own routine for it. So you're not limited to what's on the DVD. You can come up with your own routine and your own kind of handling for the trick. So you can make it as easy or as advanced as you want or stick to what's on the DVD. And Caleb also wants to know, is it worth the money? Yes. I think it is very, it's worth a, a, the money because you're spending over $100 for the trick. It's definitely worth it because you're, you're, you're using things that aren't foreign to kids. So if you're, if you strictly do kids show magic or you do a lot of shows for kids, this is going to be a hit because you're not using alcohol references like with the multiplying bottles where it's a shot glass or a small little glass and a martini bottle. This one you're using a soda can and a can of Pringles. And every kid knows Pringles and soda. So it's, and you don't have to worry about parents maybe saying at the end of the show, I've never had this happen when using the multiplying bottles. I've only used it like twice in a kid's show, but I've never had a parent correct me and say, Oh, you're using alcohol on a kid's show, an alcohol reference. Parents may be a little worried about that, and they may ask you about that after the show. So this way, you don't worry about having parents come up to you and talk to you about that. And also, uh, kids know what Pringles and soda are. And Caleb also wants to know, how does most of your audiences like it? I haven't done this for kids yet. Uh, for, I should say for a kid's show audience. I haven't had a kid's show because I've been busy with work. But I will say that I did it for my family at Christmas time. We had a family get together and they loved it. They thought it was so cool the way I performed. We'll talk more about the way I perform in a minute. But um, they really do, they really liked it. And they said, oh, that's really cool. And the ending of the routine where you can crack open the soda and you can crack open the Pringles can and eat the chips inside, that blows them away too. And I'll talk more about that. And that's really cool because. Uh, with the multiplying bottles, I've had people say to me, I think I know how that's done. But with this one, I have a feeling people aren't going to know because their theory will get blown out of the water when you crack the last one open and eat Pringles out of it. All right, and Future Magic 101 says, Hey, Bob, do you have your own pattern when performing this trick? And how easy is the secret move when lifting up the covers around the chips? Thanks. All right. I don't have any powder for this trick, actually. Uh, I did this trick for one of the final videos of the 365-day magic challenge. Go check that out. I think it was day number 362 or 3 or something like that. Uh, but what I do for the trick is instead of talking, I set this trick to music and I do it. Uh, I, I do the Pure Imagination song from the Willy Wonka movie. Uh, and I do the trick and I and I edited the song together to use it at certain points. Like it says at one point in the song, um, uh, if you want to change the world, and when it says change, the bottle and the and the, uh, the the soda and the bottle have switched places. So it kind of there's a little bit of the song. You can check it all out. It's day number one of the last videos of 365 Day Magic Challenge. All right. How easy is the secret move? The secret move is very easy. Um, again, like I can't say, I can't go into how the trick works in this show, but the secret move is very easy. When you lift it up, uh, the trick basically does all the work for you. That's all I'm going to say. All right. Thanks so much for watching this week's show. Next week, we're going to talk about a really cool piece of magic. We're going to talk about Overstuffed by Bizarro. This is the Oreo cookie trick where you lick the cream off of the Oreo and then it comes back. Check out my 365-day magic challenge performance for that. That was uh, right before Christmas I uploaded that one. Check that performance out and then post your questions down below for next week. I'll give them an answer. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next Thursday. Do you know how to mix up cards?
you say, you are not cards. You are not cards. You get the, the two tubes and you get a certain amount of bottles. Let me grab one of the uh, real and usable. You're probably talking like a hundred dollar trick. So that's why. And, and it's a real. Their selected card will say that the King of Diamonds goes right on the table. And all.